Hello, you two, and uh, uh, Steve, this is your second time on the podcast, correct? You were on with Jay before, I believe. Yeah. Got a new tag team partner this time, though. Yeah, this time he, uh, we are accompanied by uh, our good pal, Aubrey. Hello, Aubrey. Oh, hello, you two. Just since we have two people on at the same time as guests, why don't you just very, very brief intro on who you are? What do you do? What's your favorite thing to do? Sure, I'll go. Uh, I'll go first. I'm Aubrey Garwood, and one of my favorite things to do is uh, photography. Uh, love nature and traveling and all that good jazz. Um, but I'm also a huge nerd too. So, you know. And uh, my name is Steve Yurko. Uh, I am a artist. I'm a professional storyboard artist, and I'm also a huge nerd. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, basically, uh, just wanted to have Aubrey on because, um, you know, she's, uh, she's a good friend and also semi recent, you know, well, by the time this goes up, it would have been a while ago, but by the time we're recording this, you had a very recently, uh, visited us. So here in LA, we had a, a grand old time. Yes, um, we did. And that included some, well, perhaps one of the most efficient Disneyland <laughs> days I've ever experienced, uh, <laughs> That you was know, it, incredible. It was so efficient. I wrote down every single attraction we hit up that day. Uh that <laughs> can you please just read it off? Sure. Let me uh let, let me open up my journal. I mean, I you know Jay's just... listening to this as the editor going, he's talking about fucking Disneyland <laughs> again. It's Too bad, again. Jay. Too bad, I, I listeners. Did, I don't know. I, I I listened to the show and I haven't heard it brought up in a while. I'm not completely caught up, but uh It'll it'll pop up, you know, board games, Disneyland, you know these these things pop up, but I don't care anyway. Please, I want people, especially those of you who are Disneyland familiar, how ridiculous this day was. I also just want first to caveat out, it that it was my first time ever at any Disney park. So, yeah. yes, uh, and the first <laughs> ride we rode was well, uh, myself and my friend Mike got there before Not you. you so we're talking about Aubrey, her experience. <laughs> All right. Um, it's, I, I did, by the way, I did jot this down as the most efficient day at Disney I've ever had. Um, yeah. But right off the bat, we started Aubrey's uh, first ever time in any Disney park with the newest ride in Disneyland, Rise of the Resistance, the new Star Wars ride. Which was incredible. Was incredible. Uh, yeah. We it was your first spoil it, what happened it was on the ride. Long's first time as well. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, me and Anne Marie had not ridden it, uh, and you know it's funny to be like spoiling a ride. What are you talking about? But really, it's truly an amazing experience that you just want to go into completely blind. Like it's just it's a long ride. It's full of surprises. It is on a you know technical scale one of the most impressive things in the entire both parks. It's just. A, gorgeous amazing experience and you know every time i talk about star wars i always i'm like i'm not a big fan of star wars but and i gotta say same thing for this i'm not a big i'm not like a diehard fan but even i was like you know mouth agape right mouth agape at like some of the stuff uh that you saw in that in that ride um yeah and, i don't get how yeah. you could not be impressed by this ride especially the fact that the two times i've been on it it's broken down while we were online uh, mm, yeah, we did have to wait a little bit, but it wasn't too bad. Uh, no, nothing compared to the first time I went on it. Uh, yeah, because you went on it, and how long did you wait? It was like it was raining or something, right? It was, yeah, it was in the pouring rain. It, it, yeah, it was pouring before we even got on the uh, on the line for that ride, because it's a virtual queue. Long story short, you pretty much have to almost like book in advance the day of you go there a spot mm -hmm. online at a certain time but we finally we're out of the rain and we're waiting for this ride you know we're getting pretty excited when you hear a lot of good things and then they you know over the pa they say you know they're experiencing technical difficulties it's going to be a while and that's like the first test and then the second test is we're not boarding anyone else uh at this time you could wait out if you want to or you could exit and mm -hmm. we're like well we're not skipping out on this and also because it was it was at that time it was so hard to or it was very competitive i should say to get in the virtual queue yeah, for Res resistance right. i always describe it at, at nauseum at least the first time we went on it you had to be in the park 
to mm. to try and reserve a spot and you have to do this on your phones so you get into like the entrance of disneyland and everyone is just huddled in groups and everyone is just trying to do it at the same time and you're hearing distant cheers in the background of people got in and other people are still stressing out because they haven't gotten a boarding group number yet but right. that, it was it was so fulfilling to get that but we were like well we're not gonna we're not going to blow this chance. And also it's pouring rain the rare times it does in LA. Uh, so we wound up, I think we were sitting in a corner of this and the, and the line queue was like an underground uh, resistance base. We we're just sitting in this corner for about an hour and a half, two hours, maybe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and I was, I, it felt like different ordeals. Cause at that point when they finally said, okay, it's going to be a while to we're back up, but we're going to bring all you through the line and we're going to give you passes to come back when it's operating. So mm. thankfully, later that evening, we were able to get on and it was it, it's handily my one of my favorite rides, if not my favorite ride now. It's definitely top five. <laughs> I mean, Splash Mountain's still my favorite, but this mm -hmm. might be two or three. It's, it's really that good. Like it doesn't uh, have a legacy yet. And that's the problem. But I but, mean, that's just so amazing. Now, give a, give us the very just as quickly as you can go through the sure, entire sure, sure. list of what we did that day. I apologize. Oh, I gotta get. I, I gotta. I, I literally wrote this down, so I gotta just. Oh, like through. hand, flip, like on with like, yes. with a journal. quill yeah. and a scroll. I'm not. Yeah, that that, that wasn't me joking. Yeah. Pied Piper, uh, royal, uh, please unveil the uh, royal scroll and uh, sound okay. off the the list. Thank you. So, Rise of the Resistance, then Splash Mountain, and then we went over to uh, California Adventure for Radiator Springs, then the uh, the the Mater ride, the uh, the hoedown, hoot nanny, whatever the hell it's called, uh, yeah, yeah. then Grizzly Rapids, then the was the Golden Zephyr, I think, mm -hmm. then Goofy Sky School, then the Silly Symphony Swings, uh, then Mickey's Fun Wheel, the sliding track. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, which was very and, fun to see Aubrey's reaction <laughs> I always love seeing the look of fear of anyone on that ride um, yeah. including myself I get spooked uh, mm -hmm. then the Incredicoaster was working again so we went on that uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy ride uh, the Monsters Inc. ride and then we went back to Disneyland and we did Indiana Jones, Pirates of the Caribbean uh, the Astro Orbiter because I don't think I've ever been on it uh, underrated <laughs> ride very mm -hmm. underrated. A great time to go on it too is when people are starting to uh, uh, wait for like, like the like fireworks and stuff. Yeah, or the shows. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and it's at night. Everything's lit up, and you're just looking down at the crowd when you're spinning around. It's really cool. Uh, then we went on the Matterhorn, then Space Mountain, Star Tours, and then we finished the night with the Haunted Mansion. That was, I mean, because I, you know I've gone so many times, I can just trace that on a map what we did. And we were <laughs> thorough. That's like fucking you're in a video game, like side questing, like you're covering every inch of the map. Like we Big Thunder Mountain was closed. So we couldn't do that. But we yeah. did every sing. Is there a single big ride we missed? Like uh, one of the big, depends. big rides? Uh, Not I mean, really, Smuggler's right? Run is still kind of new, but I'd say uh, that's a big ride. I mean, Smuggler's Run is good but it's not something that i consider a huge priority like no um and one that could definitely be done you know on a second visit or something like that um right. but uh yeah it was it, it was quite a day now aubrey having you know this being your your first ever disney day what was your you know your general reactions thoughts on, oh, on that experience it was incredible. Uh, well, first, <laughs> we got group two for Rise of the Resistance, and we weren't planning on being there, like, right That's it right. open. So, yeah. So, so we, we were like, like, okay, we're going to go. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> so we had, a, and we were car pulling, so we had to meet up and everything, but we got there just in time, just in the nick of time. And it was just like, okay, speed race. Like, okay, don't take any of the sites. Don't look at Main Street right now. Like, oh, here's Main Street. Uh, we got to walk across the park. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so it was like, oh, okay. And racing uh, to get there. And then I was, was worried. Just... <laughs> I, I did 
didn't want that to be your entire experience of like, all right, come on, we got to do this. Come on, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. Oh, no, 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 it wasn't. It was truly just to get to Rise, which was totally understandable. Because After that, it was pretty been... chill after that. I mean, <laughs> yeah, we, we exactly. hit everything at a nice leisurely pace. Yeah, we also, it... we went on a weekday. We went the day after Labor Day. So mm. that park was not that packed. Yeah, yeah, it was really empty and there was like no line. So for me, I'm like, is this what Disney's also always like? It's so great. There's oh, no waiting. There's no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that was incredible. And then Rise, not spoiling anything. It just was, it blew, well, I didn't have anything to claim it to. So I'm like, wow, all Disney rides are incredible. <laughs> like, <laughs> right. I think are. I said They're... to you, uh, I was like, hey, just so you know, this is the most like recent ride. It's yes. possibly one of the, the best. So uh, don't hold everything to this standard. <laughs> <laughs> you did. You absolutely did. And we had time like after like racing there, we had a little bit of time to like chill in line because the ride broke down, but for, just briefly, which is not a big deal. So it was kind of nice to chat and catch up and everything. Just uh, shoot the shit in the line. And then, yeah, Rise was amazing. And yeah, some standouts of the day is um, uh, that Splash Mountain was really fun. I wasn't expecting to be as thrilly as it was. I thought it would just be like one big splash, but mm. it's just like those little <laughs> kind of waves in the middle. Uh, we're crazy. <laughs> <laughs> I remember we kept field. we kept teasing you the entire ride. Like anytime there was like a small drop, we'd be like, "Oh, this is it! This is it!" There's that one part where you're going up, and it feels like it's gonna be this big drop, and yep. it's not. It, it's just completely level. But I we totally like <laughs> was you it you that we faked out? Yeah, yeah. Like oh, oh, oh. And it's just blah. <laughs> it's just completely level. Yeah, oh, I love yep. doing that. It was great. And on, and... on the topic of Splash Mountain, real quick, just want to say, oh yeah. The, yeah. The drop that's really bad is not the main drop that you see. It's the one inside, the the one as you enter into the uh, the laughing place. Mm -hmm. It yeah. messes me up every time. Actually, the when we went on Splash Mountain, I think that's the worst I ever got soaked on that ride. Oh, I think wow. I was For drenched. Me, I don't. I forget if it was that time or with our friend Maddie. Uh, it might have been. Oh God, I can't remember now. I'm mixing up. Uh, one of those two times, or, or was it when we went with? You know, just, I'm just name dropping so many different <laughs> Disney. Or, maybe, or, or when when I went with? I don't know, Leo. That was was that was Leo there also with Maddie? That was the same time, right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. That's when right, we went right. in August. Yeah. Yeah. Or, one no, of those July, two times. Of July, the yeah. first drop, like not the one, the one just like outside the cave. I got wrenched. Absolutely, like, uh, and, like the, the entire like I wanted to, I almost described it like the fucking first part of the log like filled up <laughs> like a like a cup <laughs> like I was like it, it was, like, so much water got in. It's always a telling sign like what your experience is gonna be like when you board that log for Splash Mountain and you see how uh, how high of a level of water there is at the floor of it. Right, yeah. Yeah. And, and you go in and it's just like, psh, it's like oh boy, all right. Here we go. <laughs> and I'm used to being put in like the last seat, like, and that's mm, usually yeah. the safest seat. But that's like, <laughs> that's like going into a public restroom and using the handicap stall. It's like mm. nice and luxurious. I could like sp <laughs> spread my legs out a little bit. I got plenty of shoulder room. My head always gets cut off in the picture, though. But... <laughs> so and I was Which sitting amazing in the second seat. How tall you are. It's like, yeah, oh, right. it's yeah. Cut off. Yeah. But yep. I was sitting in the second seat this time behind Sung Lan, and I felt like I felt like tidal waves were hitting me. I was <laughs> I was I was so I, I always like curse up a storm uh, at that drop inside like the laughing place. Wow. Yeah. Did anyone hear that, by the way? I, yeah. So right now it's thundering uh, in L.A. for me and Steve. So it's, it's very, very surreal. It doesn't it, it rains very rarely. It almost never thunders. So, uh I know Twitter is freaking out right now. Um, but yeah, so, I mean, I guess, Aubrey, in general, you know, what were some of your, the highlights of your your Los Angeles uh, trip? Oh, man. Um, we ate so much good food. Uh, going to Soban was delicious. Oh. That was definitely one of my favorite restaurants I've been to in quite some time. Um, our Korean barbecue was also delicious too. Just, I've never had Kobe beef and that was great. The whole, there were so many courses. I was like, we can't keep eating. And it was like, yes, you can. <laughs> yeah. So the Soban for listeners uh, is uh, mm. the restaurant that uh, Hong Jun-ho uh, and, and crew and cast went to after winning for Parasite. Uh, mm -hmm. And their specials are uh, 
Kanchan Gejang, which is soy sauce marinated crab, uh, raw crab, which is great. Um, Kalbi Jim, which is braised, you know, beef. And then um, the, uh, oh, what's it called? The braised cod is just amazing. Like, Steve, mm -hmm. you have not been there, right? I missed out on that night, I believe. I will. I, it was just, it was a lunch, so yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah, oh, okay. we absolutely uh, need to take you. Um, what is the name? Oh, like a like a Uh It's it's oh, Yeah, it's basically a spicy cod. It's, it's like melt in your mouth, just falling off the bone, tender fish, really delicious sauce. Uh, that was great. And then we went to uh, Tenraku for. Uh, KBBQ, which Steve, you were there for that. Yes, uh, that was insane. That was like we were. I was worried that we weren't gonna get enough meat because it was you know <laughs> kind of pricier, higher end. I'm like, okay, so we I, we might need to expect you know good quality meat, but not be full. But we were fucking stuffed <laughs> by the end of that. That was <laughs> a lot of food. We feasted Sometime, for sure. I, I I've been to a lot of korean barbecue places with you lately and it feels like every time we go it almost it's like a legend of zelda like boss rush dungeon where mm. we think we're done but there's still like a couple more rounds it's so um, great yeah like we're like okay that was it right and they're like oh here's the fried rice we put in the pan and here's the free ice cream it's like oh oh yeah keep it coming keep the boss waves coming carry i was karaoke the first Time? Karaoke was the first time, yeah, that we were hanging out, and that was great. That was a that was amazing, re really fun time. Uh, mm -hmm. What was the favorite song you sang, and the favorite maybe memory of the karaoke? Mm, song I sang. Oh no, man! It's I'll, I'll give you now. the same question too, Steve. Okay, um, I'll operate to you. I have my answer, but okay, what's your, what's your answer? Yeah, yeah. Uh, my favorite. Well. So, some honorable mentions is we went to like the one place I knew of that had two songs from Sonic Adventure 2. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so I, our, our our good friend Elvis was like, we got to go there. We got to go there. They have it. And yeah. Elvis is like, I know those songs. <laughs> I know those two songs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, but my favorite, it was such an obscure pick. Uh, Sung Wan and I sang uh, Dick in a Box, which was uh, the old <laughs> SNL digital short from like 2005. Six, yep. maybe it's from ages ago yeah. yeah yeah and i was amazed you know oh it's not the most complicated song lyrically so uh and yeah i remember right up where i left all off. of it yeah <laughs> yeah yeah that's a good uh, choice yeah that was a, that was a great memory well <laughs> well what, and then what other people that I, I was gonna say i was saying i was gonna get to like my other favorite memory of the night but yeah, uh, yeah what was it aubrey aubrey might mention it so if not oh, okay. i'll I'll yeah, Robert, okay. what, do you, what, what do you got? Well, I'll I'll start with the my other favorite memory, just in case it's what Steve's thinking of. Is I like when Steve was <laughs> improving. We we didn't know how to quite work the remote uh, of the how to control the karaoke machine, and yeah. so it was just there was just the you know the random video footage that they put on, and it was just a very elegant, beautiful uh, <laughs> uh, rendition of singing all of that improvisation. So that was pretty fun. Um, but there's also a lot that, of. Yeah. Um, uh, I think we sang um, Inuyasha's opening song on duetting. Uh, so that yes. was that was pretty great. Um, so maybe that was my favorite song I sang that night too, because I don't usually get to do that at karaoke. And Steve, what did, you, did it, is there another one you had? Yeah, and this is the one that uh, went public, went viral, if you will. Oh, <laughs> yes. uh, the, the don't stop me now. <laughs> Should we explain the context or just uh, uh, you can leave it up video. to imagination? It's yeah. Or, or like, yeah, it's just, uh, we, well, no, I think the context is funny because basically, um, we, we were gonna, it was like the right at the end of the night and we wanted to end with, uh, what live and learn. Right. Um, yes. so we had like five minutes and I was like, but you know, the energy had like died down or something. And I was like, okay, let's, you know, let's really get back in the spirits of it. And, you know, we have a little bit of time I, or I thought. And so I was like, let's put on, and we had song Don't Stop Me Now before, but I was like, let's put it on again. It's a nice, that's a nice closing, and then we'll get really, it'll amp us up for Live and Learn. Um, and then we start it, and then the people come in for, like, the bill, right? And it, and it just completely. No, it was, it, it was the, the valet. Uh, the valet, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for for oh, the parking. Yeah. And it completely killed everything, the momentum, yeah, because. Uh, 
it was just ironically like, oh, here's it your did stop bill, us now. Blah, blah, blah. yeah it did stop <laughs> us then um, <laughs> um and so we just it was uh, then i think angel and me and you we just started doing it in bad accents uh, just saying the song as yeah. this was happening um <laughs> i still Elvis was almost gonna kill me because we thought we ran out of time because i didn't notice that there was like an actual timer because a lot of karaoke places like once it gets close they usually like give you some leeway of like okay one more song and then you can kind of take off right yeah but i didn't know that the room literally had a timer in the screen uh and so like we ran out of time and elvis was like you're gonna we ended <laughs> on that. <laughs> um, but I was like, I said to him, I was like, this was a good call because if we had done Live and Learn instead, uh, the valet would have interrupted that and that would have been a mm -hmm. bummer. But we instead, were, yeah. it's good that we had like a throwaway song, you know, have a goofy bit. And then they were kind enough to let us give us a little more time so we could do Live and Learn at the end. And it was great. Yeah, it all uh, again, worked one out. Of the, one of the two songs he knows, so you know, I'm glad he got to sing. <laughs> uh, I also, I, I, from what I remember, we got there around like 9 p.m., mm -hmm. and that was like 2 a.m. when we were yes. wrapping up. And I don't think yeah. I've ever done karaoke for that long of a period. So it was mm -hmm. great. Yeah, I yeah, could have kept going. Uh, mm -hmm. That was also it was one a good of the icebreaker. Few, yeah, yeah, you fit in like perfectly. I was like, man, Aubrey should move here with <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i've never heard that before you've never suggested that yeah so i don't know the first time. <laughs> but um it was also i think because you know uh i think you know, i've been i haven't done like a ton of karaoke in my life but uh, you know the other times i kind of did a lot of like uh weeb songs but this was one of those nights where uh i actually pulled out a lot more like you know kind of just english songs and um mm -hmm. I remember Angel being like surprised because they were like, uh, what? You like always act like you don't know any music. I was like, I guess I know more than I let on, but I don't know. Music is usually like my big weakness of like pop culture, you know? Yeah. Well, like, you'd be surprised. You like, plenty. Pop songs are popular for a reason because they're easy to memorize. And yeah, like I never knew I knew lyrics to Backstreet Boys songs. But then when someone sings in karaoke, I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I, for, I, for I guess time, I know yeah. this. Right. right. <laughs> like halfway through, you learn the song. You're like, OK, yeah. I can jump mm -hmm. in anyway. It's not that tough. So, yeah. Yeah, um, I love karaoke. Yeah, I the only thing is I, I can't like I have to like plan ahead because it's like, OK, I can't do karaoke right before the day of a session. Otherwise, there's a right. chance my, my throat will go out. Uh. Although I think that one, I might have been. I forget if I was okay or not. I don't remember. But uh, not to call you out, but we did have one on the Fourth of July that I think tore your. No, no, no. That one. <laughs> that one apart. fucked me up. Yeah. I was like, I'm talking about that one and the one after that fucked me up. Not fucked me up, but like it was. I always describe. So like to test my register, if I like, I'm not sure. I do. Um, there's like. Do you, do you remember either we watch OK KO? Yes. Uh, there's a character I do I do a Johnny. You remember Johnny? The yeah, the he's he's kid? the like the how to draw manga yeah, yeah. looking kid. You know, yeah. he's like yeah, like Johnny. I'm like, can I do that voice? And if I can't do that voice perfectly, then I know that I'm. It's like a little worn. Um, it's one of those things where like, uh, if I like my normal speaking voice sounds fine, but then if I try to do that or Another voice that is a good testing voice is, you guys, I don't think either of you are watching it, but we have the Danganronpa playthroughs on my Let's Play channel, and there's a character named Monokuma, and my voice, my Monokuma voice sounds like this, so it's like, if I can't do that, like, it'll sound like this, I'm like, ooh, okay, so I gotta take a, I gotta take a vocal rest day. That's how I, like, know if um, I went a little too hard on karaoke or not, but I think that that time... I was okay. I think I knew. I I think maybe it might be in a, a maybe like me sort of a being more experienced with karaoke and knowing my limits and not pushing too hard, uh, and b maybe just like my vocal cords just getting used to that, like singing for five hours straight. Like, <laughs> I feel like I feel like they get strengthened over time or something or a resistance at least. So. Your your voice is only gonna get deeper. <laughs> Go down a few octaves. <laughs> Which is like Wait. the dream. 
I <laughs> <laughs> should, fair should number s- of people. Oh, sorry, what were we going to say? Uh, uh, oh, sorry, just that we had a f- fair number of people, too. So we got to take break. It wasn't like literally we were singing five hours straight. Yeah, we had right. a good amount of people so we could switch off, you know? And should, I find, and should also I find, state that this is the room style karaoke, not the go to a at, bar's at the bar karaoke in front of everybody, and right. sing by yourself at a bunch of strangers. No, no, no. I've never done that style of karaoke. I've always only done like Korean Japanese style karaoke. Mm-hmm. Uh, have either of you yeah, done that's... like straight up bar karaoke? I not at a bar, but at um like a vacation place with my parents. It was like this like. I think I'm pretty sure uh, I did it there. Um, so, and you just sing on a stage and maybe also once I, I don't know, it was like, it was a Girl Scouts and something similar to Girl Scouts too. So, mm. you know, but not at a grungy bar with people. That yeah, sounds that absolutely once. mortifying to me. Not yeah. because I don't <laughs> I, think I can do it, but I just don't have any real desire to do it for oh, a bunch of strangers. I don't know. I did no. do it actually once in a bar. Uh, it was in Ohio. I what forgot. did you sing? <laughs> um <laughs> vanessa carlton's a thousand miles because there's these guys so my friend has these guys and they always sing that song we've done karaoke a couple times uh with them before mm. the first time i did korean karaoke is at a bachelor party with her um so and after that it was like a tradition it's like they always sing uh a thousand miles um and so they they convinced me it was later into the night you know obviously because i was like i'm not fucking doing that like there's darts in the other room we were going for like darts and just shooting the shit and then they're like there's karaoke over here you should sing with us aubrey and so yeah thousand miles mm, I see. yep should have put uh, that song on when we were all doing it we what were you gonna say earlier i i think the only time i had done karaoke prior to the room ones i think was like i was young and it was like a block party and mm. i just did like a very metal rendition of uh michael jackson's beat it and i thought it, it got over well but i i don't sure if it everyone was in on the joke or just laughing at me and I'm a young, dumb kid. I thought, like, you know what? I should do it again. And that DJ was like, yeah, yeah, sure. And no. <laughs> but no, I think when you do something, like, when it's, like, solo, like, at a bar, like a karaoke night, I never went to one. But that is, you got to you gotta realize you're performing. That is a performance oh, yeah. instead of oh, a yeah. room where it's, like, you're vibing. You're you're hanging out. Yeah. Like, I, I'd much rather <laughs> have a good time with friends than entertain strangers. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I I totally agree, absolutely. Um, and I find that for my strategy, and some people, you know, they don't they don't even need to think about this, but I do to make sure I preserve, you know, my my voice is. It's like I gotta I gotta choose my battles. Like I can't I can't sing. <laughs> some people, you know, like Jay will sing every song, and that's great. You know, we need people like that. But for me, I'm like yeah. I can't I can't not do every single one. I gotta choose my battles and. Uh, I'll support you, if you necessary. definitely need. Yeah, you definitely need like a team captain. You need the person mm-hmm. that's going to like keep the energy up. Who's going to uh, like our friend Dave is one mm-hmm. of those people who yeah. will put in a bunch of stuff. He will like gladly like help you out in a song like you definitely right. need that utility player. <laughs> yep. Yeah. But what was fun about that night in particular was because, you know, I've a lot of the karaoke's I go to, it's very group oriented, like every everyone knows this song. But I found that with that night it was kind of fun. I'd be like, Does anyone know this? And I'd be like, Oh, Aubrey knows it? Okay, just me and Aubrey will sing this. And then mm-hmm. oh, like me and or Steve and Angel know this one. You know, it was mm-hmm. it's kind of fun. It, like I, I can also enjoy when it's like a little more quote unquote intimate, right? Where it's like, you know, just like very just having a good time, not worrying about, oh, does do people know this song? Oh, I'll just put it on and see if anybody knows it and, you know, go for it. That's it's always very fun. I still get very self-conscious, though, at karaoke because, yeah, that stuff, it's like, that stuff runs through my head because I'd rather, I don't care much to be like, oh, it's like, this is my song. You know, like, it's it's the performative thing. Like, everyone pay attention to me. This is my my solo performance. I'm like, no, I'd rather everyone be in on it um, or right. at least one other person. So, I like, I remember going to that book. I'm like, oh, this is a good song, but I don't know if anyone would want to sing that. And then, like, like twenty minutes later, Sung Wan has put that song up, and I'm like, "Oh, okay." <laughs> I, was, I was looking over at at, at young Stephen, uh, uh, his, his nose in the book. Like, oh, what should I do? He's like, "All right, I'll help the young lad. I'll throw on the songs." <laughs> I I mean, I love singing, and so for me, it's you know, I'm I'm, I'm not, I don't I never want to be like solo guy, but I do like <laughs> you know, uh, putting on a show sometimes. Mm. I I. Fun. 
I think because there's less pressure to sing a full song. Like I enjoy singing in a car with like friends. Uh, yeah. Yes. Cause then it's like, yes. if, if you don't know all the lyrics or you get tired, you could just <laughs> let the rest of the song play. Dude. Yeah. I love that. Do you remember, Me too. Not, not do you remember, but there was, there was, <laughs> I think it was before our first karaoke together, Steve, where yes. I remember specifically yeah. we had gotten, what was, what were we doing? Oh, we went to, um, Galco's. Right, we, and we got Galco's. sodas. And you know, and you know, what Galco's we had dinner. Are? No, I have no idea what that is. Galco's is a a soda pop shop in LA that's really cool. You go there, and it's all they sell. It's just all different types of soda pop and booze, oh, okay. uh, like really obscured, really interesting types of pop or pop. Well, soda. I was like, oh, the Michigan's coming <laughs> out. You are yeah, my, my, Minnesota, my Minnesotan's <laughs> coming out. Oh yeah, your soda pop there. Um, but what do you call a sandwich? <laughs> I call it a sandwich. What do you think I would call not it? Not like a hoagie, a sub, grinder? No, I do not. Hoagies sure. are like Philly, that, isn't I it? I mean, a sub is if you get like a sub-style sandwich. Yeah. That's what I mean. Yeah, shut up. Anyway, uh, <laughs> we, we went to Galco's. We got fried chicken afterwards. And then I was like, because, you know, I don't know about either of you, but for me, when I was uh, younger, not that young, but like, you know, maybe college. And so I would always, I would actually sing in the car with my friends a lot. Mm -hmm. um, because I always just had my iPod on and sometimes songs would come on. Um, but it wasn't something that really, well, also, for those of you who aren't listening who don't know, I don't drive anymore. Um, so it, it it's one of those things I actually kind of miss. And I was like, and Steve was, Steve was driving uh, me uh, and Mike actually in the back. What was funny was Mike wasn't singing. So it's just like <laughs> Mike's two dads in the car, just like <laughs> we were just like we were just like going hard on like Disney's. We were like fucking pull up like a Disney Spotify list, and then we were just going hard on. I mean, what was when we Jungle Book? Uh, I want to be like you. I think we went really. Oh, hard that's on that. that's one of my favorites because that and one of my best friends from back in New York. Like you know, we really bonded over <laughs> our strange tastes in music. Mm -hmm. And we would go all in on the I want to be like you song, including the scatting. The scatting oh, yes. is the, the most essential part. <laughs> I hope I didn't I, I, disappoint. Uh, I remember I, vividly, I think at that point, uh, I was driving through Burbank and I think Sung Won in the car says like, I think I think that was a uh, that, that was a pretty big bonding moment right there. I remember you <laughs> yeah. saying out loud. That was a social link upgrade. Uh, that was yeah. a level up in our yeah, friendship. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and I would say we, were, we already will have leveled up several times, but uh, like, you know, that's like a, that's an intimate special moment with Mike in the back silent. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, like I, I remember you were very like self-conscious and I was like, we're going to sing. I was like, as we were walking back to the car, I was like, we're going to sing. Get, as soon as we're getting in that car, we're going to sing whether you like it or not. Um, and uh, yeah, it was great. Did your family sing in the car with you? Like, did, did you no, guys just start singing no. that spontaneously? Or? No, my family did. We we did not sing mm. in the car. That was just something. So when I, back when I used to drive, you know, I'll, you know, I would, I don't know if you guys do this, but I would always like have music and sing out loud a lot. And being the weirdo I am, sometimes I would do voices to myself, like little bits. That's sometimes like this is also maybe around the time when I was like doing a lot more skits. So if I like, you know, had an idea for a skit, I might say it out loud, or if I had an idea for a voice or something, um, I would just talk. Do you talk to yourself in the car at all? Are either of you that like that? Yes, mm. uh, especially to your podcast. So I'll be like mm. talking like it's fucking voice chat. I'll be like shooting this. Sh like I'll be like, oh, I think this. I'm like, oh, wait, they're not gonna. <laughs> 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 I don't hear you. I do do that sometimes <laughs> with podcasts. Sometimes like somebody will say something. I go, oh, I'll be <laughs> like out loud <laughs> alone. I'm like, mm, oh yeah. It's only outburst of anger. Or say like if I'm listening to like a podcast and someone says something stupid, I'm like, you fucking idiot. Or, you know, someone cuts me off. And it's like, mm. no, I don't talk much in the car. That, growing up, though, I think we were just subjected to my parents' different taste of music. Mm. And that definitely mm. rubbed off on my taste of music. But like that was before, uh, you know, portable CD players and iPods really became a thing. And then it was mm -hmm. just like, no. Nah, Cool. Now I get to listen to my own stuff. Um, how would you describe? I'm gonna ask each of you this, but I'll start with Steve. How would you describe your tastes in music? Like a weird dad. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> these, I mean this, ha this has been popping up recently. A lot of people, a lot of people have been calling, including myself, been calling you very dad energy. Uh, yeah, that tracks. 
So like, I, I think it started with a, a, a friend. A, I think a mutual friend of ours commented on a photo of us at uh, uh, we did a mini golf, mm. and they said like Steve with with the real dad energy. And which then, friend was that again? Uh, Marin Miller. Oh have yeah, you, yeah, yeah, have yeah. You two yeah. Ever okay. met? Right. Yeah, yeah. Probably. Uh, I don't remember exactly yeah, she, who, but she'll always bust my balls. Um, mm. But uh, I, I I remember distinctly it. It was a lock when you and I and Angel, we went to uh, Knott's Berry Farm for the first time. I think it was the first yes. time all of us had been there. Yes. And I am I am known for like every piece of clothing I have has like a cartoon character or something on it. <laughs> like all I have is graphic t-shirts. Honestly, me too. And that was yeah. <laughs> and that was a hot summer day. It was the one day I wore this shirt from Uniqlo I got. It's nothing on it, but it's like a super lightweight, breathable shirt. And then everyone else is wearing cartoon characters and crap, and everyone, and that's the time I get mocked for dressing like a normie. And, and you had your and sunglasses and your, you know, your 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 dad stance. Uh, yeah, that was a and really that's fun really stuck. day too. The Knott's Berry Farm, like just a little uh, recap for listeners, like. I gotta get Angel on again, uh, but um, <laughs> Our, but this podcast episode has just been about like here's <laughs> here's all these great times we had. Honestly, I mean, yeah, it's, uh, I'm sure it's not uninteresting. Uh, but anyway, our our good friend Angel, who's been on the podcast before, uh, was like terrified of rides. Right, like even the Incredicoaster at Disney was too much. And then we go to Knott's Berry Farm, and I don't really push them that much, but they just sort of slowly started to ride the most like increasingly intense and then like crazy intense stuff where i was like yo like and even steve i think is like nervous about this like you know the ones that are mm -hmm. like from top you weren't there but it's like the gig you know the ones that are like the gigantic loops like not loop but like yep. a giant upside down you in the in the going up to the sky and you just uh -huh. go up up and down like in like 10 seconds yep. like yep those are the types i hate yes it, uh, it's not so much i'm not i'm not fearful of the ride i'm fearful of the signs that say your head can't go past the headrest <laughs> and, and i'm like and i kept saying to them i was like i don't know i might be too tall for this ride you know i don't, I don't feel like getting my neck broke for this that does make um, sense. yeah um and also i'm so i'm so used to like disney and universal yeah, stuff like Knots and Six Flags, and that's more like amusement park. The rides mm. there are just every ride is super intense. So there's no, let's go on this you know thrill ride, and then we'll go you know we'll go relax on Pirates of the Caribbean. In some cases, uh, you know, you specifically maybe take a nap. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, I always um, sleep on pirates. That's great. So yeah, Angel like basically rode literally every thrill ride in the park, and after that. They were kind of like, I don't want to do more. Like we had, com I because you know we were walking to the park and I was like, Angel, I'm gonna make you ride that. It's a giant wooden roller coaster. <laughs> and I was like, but you know, in my head, I was like, but if they're really not comfortable, I'm not gonna, you know, you know, I'm just gonna. Right. But it's a amusement park. You know, it's fun to you know go different. You should do it. You should do it. Right. Uh, but they very without very much resistance at all rode an extremely intense ride. And then it was nothing. And then they wrote everything, and they loved the wooden roller coaster. Um, and now I think there's even talks of it as like a Six Flags trip or something at some point. Like, mm -hmm. you know, I, I, I was so proud of of my child. Of like, congratulations. Like, I, I <laughs> our cured child, you. Yeah. yeah, our child. I cured you <laughs> of your fear. And now you know they wrote the Incredible Coaster, and like this is nothing. You know, it's like, it's, why was I? You know, I love that. I, I'm glad they that they were telling me. Yeah. at Disney. They're like, all this time I've been depriving myself of these fun thrill rides. I can't believe my whole life. <laughs> oh, that's so the, the one thing uh, I'll give Disney credit for for all their rides is they're very accommodating to people of all sizes and I am mm. very tall. Yes. And, and I realized that it's not a tall man's world when I was at Knott's Berry Farm and there was some rides where it was close and there was one ride that I couldn't, that's I, right. I couldn't actually get on because I was too big. Yeah, you were too tall and uh, we, I remember we were like, I was like, let's do a bit where when we get off, we go, that was amazing. But no, I didn't. It, uh, it, was, it was not. It was. You, I wouldn't you, have you, believed you. You didn't miss out. <laughs> um, okay, so going back to music. Uh, yeah, your yeah, music. music. Based. Uh, it's bizarre. It's these days, like, I, I, I love 80s music. Mm. I, I think that comes down to just anything synth. Um, okay. But, like, I, you know. 
I, I like a whole lot of I think I like a whole lot of range of 80s music. I think the video game Grand Theft Auto Vice City was very influential on my taste in music because mm. you got a sample of all of it, all yeah. the different genres. And I think that led to, you know, and I was kind of like a, uh, a, a sheep without its flock, I guess. Or no, a flock? No, that's birds. Uh, sheep without its herd. Mm. <laughs> Sheeps can't fly And in recent years. But now there's like just the Internet has introduced this wave of like synth wave, laser wave, uh, future funk. Mm. And that's kind of like where I, you know, I lay my head down now. I enjoy a lot of that i i don't enjoy as i don't like getting the uh oh what kind of music do you listen to because it's i think it's it's not so much i like listening to bands or genres like whatever song i like i like and it's just mm. that that's very much my I'll, I'll get to you aubrey in a second because mine is so basic but yeah that's pretty much mine my ipod is just a combination of tons of anime openings Yes. K-pop, <laughs> a lot of musicals, a lot of just random songs I've heard, you know, from different sources and things. I'm like, oh, I like that song. I'll throw it on there. Some video game music. But yeah, like, it's uh, when people are like, what do you listen to? It's like uh, just the weird mashup of everything that I like, but there's no weird, like, I don't know. Probably, I think, a very similar, similar to your iPod, Steve. Maybe yours might be a yeah. little more focused, but... Uh, no, I, I still listen to anime openings yeah. too. Oh, I, I always do. I, it, I remember my senior year in high school, my portfolio class. Uh, the, one of the students, I, I think the teacher just always, she brought in a burn CD and the teacher just always played it. And I thought, like, hey, how come I, you know, if I brought in a CD, would you play it? And I did. And it was just like a huge mess. And I, I, I remember the teacher saying, like, I feel like I'm getting whiplash listening to the CD because it's <laughs> like it's not consistent at all. What was that? But that's I couldn't tell you at the oh. time. I think also I think I downplayed it a little bit. I'm like, well, I, you know, I, it's, I'm always like I was talking about earlier with karaoke. I'm like, all right, I got to please the crowd a little bit. Mm. Play things people know. But mm. I think it was just there. There was no consistency because I was not a cool kid. Never have been. <laughs> so, like, I'm not playing like. <laughs> the the most recent like hits and all that whatever rock was at that point i'm like ah, i'm just gonna go all over the place and play what i like <laughs> you know i remember I think it's oh god uh, i'm sorry this is the last thing i'll say it my taste of music is the equivalent of uh you know going to a fountain soda machine and just getting all the sodas mm, in your cup yep yep <laughs> mine is like uh, a youtube playlist of just, just, <laughs> just literally, yeah. a fucking stream of consciousness. Just, I watched this show and that was funny. No, I saw that opening, that was fun. Um, but I was gonna say, uh, uh, two of the first CDs I ever burned were a CD containing all the Inuyasha openings and endings, <laughs> and only containing all the Naruto openings. And, and listening to that, those on my Walkman, oh, classic, classic. Amazing. Now, Aubrey, your your music. Oh, sure. Uh, also very eclectic, uh, fewer song openings. Um, but I, my family's pretty musical. So I'd listen to anything, uh, from like, my dad used to work at a record store. So we had a bunch of records and vinyls. Um, and he would make like mixed tapes, cassettes. Like we would take cross country road trips and belt out singing them all the time. Mm. Um, and he would make like thematic mixed tapes and stuff. So anything from like big band and swing to like classic rock to, you know, you know, eighties, nineties, uh, you know, aughts hits and all the pop stuff but i also love uh what i actually listen to the most like currently is a lot of indie a lot of folk a lot of alt uh stuff and rap r&b uh, a, a lot of stuff i listen to a lot of stuff it's my brother's trying to get me into punk because <laughs> he was briefly in a band and played for a bit so um and is into punk but that's that's one i'm less familiar with but i try to listen to a little bit of everything i'm calling it now your playlist is a thousand times hipper than me and steve's combined <laughs> oh not. for sure <laughs> yeah. I, don't think I, it's I, I, I might be a little bit punk savvy because my brother was a big uh punk guy and mm. he was the one with the computer so kind of yep. like my first ipod at the time it was whatever music he had mm. i'd put that on my ipod so I was familiar with a lot of that music at the time, and mm -hmm. I didn't really set my own path until I got my own computer. And that's when it just became like the uh, the giant parfait that Jay stirs. That's the that's my equivalent oh, of music taste. <laughs> oh. As, <laughs> don't degrade don't degrade your music taste like that. <laughs> and, and no, it's as, here's the thing about the Jay stirred parfait. 
delicious. It just doesn't look that way. Was it? <laughs> Have we we talked yeah. about the J parfait before, we right? Did. Yeah. The part J. Yeah, 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 yeah. Your last, go look yeah. that episode for that story. Yeah. Um, it's funny. My, I'm curious. Oh, go ahead. Uh, I was just gonna ask if like if there's any like obvious like influences your parents had on you on on your taste in music. If there's like one band or any artist like your parents always listen to, and now like that's ingrained in you, you like listening to them as well. That's interesting. Not really, because like I, I, I forget if I said this on the podcast or not, but like my parents didn't really listen to music in the car or for fun that much. Like, not that they didn't like music, you know. Well, my dad like he likes listening to like operas, <laughs> like, opera, operatic music, oh, cool. like That's Pavarotti. Awesome. Uh, it's very unique. It's yeah. very, and you know, like you know, singing along with it, and you know, we make fun of him. But uh, there's like. You know, he does, he's that kind of guy. Or I think the most, like, accessible thing is, I think they both have an appreciation for, like, you know, classic rock of, like, the, you know, like, uh, uh, probably, like, 70s, 80s, that sort of thing. Um, but other than that, not, we never really listened to the radio in the car. Like, that's such a, you know, foreign experience wow. to me. Like, I don't know, like, usually... Have you ever gone on long road trips? Yeah, but I was more focused on, like, either, you know, playing games, playing, like, a video game, like a Game Boy, or, like, playing with my brother or bothering my brother, or, you know, or we would <laughs> talk, you know, play games in the car. We just weren't, like, like a big radio family for for whatever reason. Like, uh, I don't know. I'm not sure why not. It wasn't like they were like, no radio. They just never did it themselves. <laughs> But how about you guys? Um, I know one that it's one band that I do not listen to that my father to this day is like, you're going to like them someday, uh, which is Steely Dan. I loathe Steely Dan. <laughs> oh, it's, it's funny you brought that up because I like Steely Dan. And I think that's because uh, my dad spammed that. I truly am a, a dad because yes. I like I mean, that is Steely the most, Dan. when you said, I literally almost made a joke. I was like, uh, do you like Steely Dan, Steve? Because that's a dad's energy song. Oh, yeah. Band. Yeah. I mean, ugh, those saxophone solos, I can't. <laughs> They're musically very good. I get it. But my dad, see, my dad spams Steely Dan like hard. And so it just had the opposite effect of me. I'm like, enough, enough Steely Dan. <laughs> my my dad, I when he got into uh, the Black Crows, he would not stop mm. with. And sometimes my dad would listen to like the same one or two songs over and over again. I, mm -hmm. In some ways, I am my father's son. Um, mm. <laughs> I, I, I can't remember how, like, how many times he's asked me. Like if I listen to Dave Matthews and I'm like, no, no, I don't. None of my friends do. My dad will still talk to me sometimes like like I have cable. It's six <laughs> years now. He keeps asking me if I like if I watched the game. Yeah. Did you, did you watch the yes. game, son, on the television? Uh <laughs> And honestly, I'll some half the time now I just answer back sarcastically, but I think the conversation still rolls along. So I don't know if he's like dishing it back at me or he believes me. I don't even know anymore. <laughs> now, uh, for both of you, uh, I would like, uh, you know, in, in podcast tradition, is there a topic or question that you want to bring up for for the group? Uh, it can be anything. Mm -hmm. And well, either whenever if either one of you has one. This is one I had in mind. Yeah. What's up? Uh, and I and I and I am aware of your uh, of your history uh, um, with uh, Mario fan fiction. Besides that, sure. I'm curious what any of your uh, creative endeavors were as a kid. Like something you went mm -hmm. all in on and you don't do anymore. Interesting. That's a good question. Um, Mario fan fiction aside, like I, I did do a lot of writing, like stories and things like that, which I don't really do anymore. I used to draw a lot as a kid, actually. Um, oh. I used to draw like quite a bit, like hollow comics and uh other things and design. I would write like quote unquote movie scripts and act them out with people. Um, but the drawing is something that's really, you know, interesting. You know, it's something that completely stopped after a certain point. I remember I took, like, there's some, like, how to draw class. And it was just, uh, I just could not grasp it. I was like, oh, okay. Like, I don't, I don't get this at all. And it wasn't, like, a sad feeling, but it was a feeling like, oh, like, I, 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 I can't, not can't, because, you know, anyone can do it, can, you know, get better at anything if they try. 
but it was one of those things where I don't have a knack for this, and I don't know. I just, it wasn't something I was super passionate about, you know, as a kid. You know, every, yeah. all kids draw as kids, right? But right. it didn't stick with me. Yeah, not to be so pessimistic, but I definitely think there's there's got to be something that clicks in, like, that certain part of your brain. Mm. I, I, like, a, a lot of people can draw, too, and there's some basics you pick up, too, but I think it's... I don't, it, the the human brain is a very uh, well, interesting. Well, I think it's honestly least. just uh, it has to be interest. There has to be real, right. genuine. Interest. Absolutely, like yeah. like that's what's gonna carry you. Like you know, I mean, a lot of you know our friends who are including you, Steve, uh, who are you know very accomplished artists. You know, they always describe their childhoods and their you know uh, early years and even now maybe well maybe not not, not less now but like is they just were always drawing all the time constantly Mm -hmm. right and that wasn't me i wasn't drawing all the time like it's no surprise to me that it was you know i never had any aspiration of like i want to be an artist i just liked drawing but not enough where it was like everything i wanted to do you know voice acting was something that maybe like high school onward was something that i was like i do really you know i really 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 want to do this and you know poured everything into that and really got a lot out of it but that is very interesting because a lot of people ask, like, you know, how did you know you were going to get into this? But the question of what did you do as a kid that you don't do creatively now is very interesting. Uh, mm-hmm. While I think of some other stuff, Aubrey, do you have any answers uh, to that question? Oh, to that? Um, I used to <laughs> I used to write fan fiction and also poetry. We were talking uh, about you know, this fan fiction literally last <laughs> night, actually. <laughs> we were. But I, you know, you don't. I would love for you to share if you'd like. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so my first fan fiction for it was young, and I was uh, one of my earliest internet haunts was Quizilla. I don't. Are you familiar, Steve? Do you know Quizilla? Quizilla. That sounds familiar. It's where you would take like online quizzes. You make online quizzes. It, Right. Yes, so it was, because it was for honestly, online quizzes. I, yeah, I, that does sound familiar because I loved personality mm-hmm. quizzes and tests and all that. Maybe because I just like I don't know myself very well. I'll let someone else decide which fictional character I'm most like. I would I, I would do a ton of those back in the day. It was oh, fun, yeah. and you like those post them on your live fun. journal. Like, look at me. I, yes. Yeah. Yep. 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 I, I, I was on Greed from Full Metal Alchemist. <laughs> <laughs> or, or they're a forum signature. I remember there was a website. I think it's long gone. It was My Otaku. It was like, uh, it was it was similar to something like Live Journal and other sites like that. And a lot of people used to post all those on their page. Mm. Yeah, oh, so that was my gateway is like, what element are you? I'm like, ice or water, you better get that, um, you know, or whatever it is. But like, uh, so then I found a different corner of Quizilla as a child. And there was like very crude choose your own adventure fan fictions you could basically do. Uh, so like, you know, it's a quiz format still because it's it, that's what it is. But people would write like dialogue and then or, you know, exposition or whatever. And then you would get to choose like your answer of dialogue. So you'd have different endings depending on what you answered. And if you're a really good fan fiction writer, uh, you would link to other, you know, different quizzes. It's like, OK, if you pick if you got this ending, click to this link. If you got this ending, click to this link. I was never that advanced. Or, you know, whatever. But it was fun to take other people's quizzes and do that. Yeah. So, when you describe yeah, this to was- me, I was like, oh, my God, I never <laughs> thought about anyone using the quiz format for a narrative but that's kind of ingenious like you know it's like a telltale game right like yeah like which you know i love i think yeah i could see why it all connected that's great and Uh, i mean aubrey you don't have to share this if you don't want to but do you want to describe (laughs) one of the (laughs) books that you wrote as a child you know what sure fuck it uh so as a kid i was like one of the only ones i remember because i wrote a bunch of crap you know i was like 10 but i was like really into yu haka show um and i was like i this is my oc it's not me but uh he and karama are at a club and this person's going to a club too how do you react like so it was, it was that <laughs> which is a typical what like, happened you know, at the club world. oh god just like i think just general dancing there was like and it's like you know the ending was like do you get he Kar- or karama <laughs> like who do you dance with like basically it was like the choice uh, mm. at the end of the, uh, the to not to spoil my uh, you know, wonderful fan fiction, but yeah, but yeah, there's some dancing, there was some drama. I think a drink was spilt and it was an embarrassing moment, you know, but it was recovered with a dance at the end and, you know, something like that, something along those lines. Very well, sounds trite. like, sounds like <laughs> the end of a modern animated film. Uh. <laughs> 
So yeah, yep. So those are some of my earliest internet haunts. And sometimes I would collaborate with my friend and uh, we would do uh, write things together on, on that too. So it was fun. Uh, Steve, did you have any? Uh, I think the first one that comes to mind is I used to make movies with action figures. Mm, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh, uh, not uh-huh. quite stop motion. I mean, I got a little bit better at animating them towards the end, but uh, used to just with a camcorder and those tiny uh, little cassettes. I forget which model it was, but uh, made a lot of those uh, up and th- like through, uh, I think, high school, too. I was like. No, those those were like weekend projects for me. Oh, okay. It was uh, what was like your best one you ever did? <sighs> I think towards the end, I was doing uh, and uh, so, some of them would never get concluded. But I did one uh, 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 continuation of Metal Gear Solid Three, mm. oh. and I remember I used my brother's. Uh, I forget what the name of this line was. Think of like the big like 12 inch G.I. Joe's with the cloth, you know, clothing and all that. Sure. And I remember just asking, like, hey, can I borrow these? And my brother's not one to (laughs) let me borrow a lot of things. He typical older brother would blame me if anything Mm -hmm. uh, was, you know, amiss or broken. Um, And we filmed it outside because normally I would make these movies in my bedroom. Mm. Uh, um, but we, we filmed this outside and I remember it was drizzling that day and, and I'm sorry, we finally, Turner, was this you and your brother together? No. Um, sometimes I'd make movies with him, but honestly, my brother and I, cause he would make some movies too. We'd kind of make our own and then we would show them to each other. Half the time my oh. movies had like an audience of one or two at most. Yeah. Yeah. Which is. Oh. The complete opposite of like how I get about my art these days. But <laughs> the fact that I would put that much work into making something only to show it to the friends I made it with or my brother is really bizarre. It's almost, it's working way too hard. <laughs> uh, I think that's very pure. But, I love that. It, it is. Yeah. I oh my god. I wish I could go back to caring less <laughs> and be like making a trivia night for only a few people i know or <laughs> uh running a weekly pokemon rp uh completely oh, from scratch yeah no it's it's very inspiring the fact that you know it's just making things that aren't monetized that's just you know it, it, do it for the for the fun of it for just the the joy of creating and that's uh i mean it's that's harder to do the older you get because you have more responsibilities mm-hmm. true. and you've got to very take care true. of yourself mm-hmm. yeah. um but I just I remember uh, this one movie in particular, I remember filming a lot of it in my friend's backyard, who was my next door neighbor at the time. And we're filming it near like some tall grass near like uh, a creek in my backyard. And I remember it was drizzling a little bit that day. And I remember when we were finally done with it and I was showing it to my older brother and he's watching it. And he just turns to me and says, you played with my figures in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> but then he, but then he was won over because the movie was hilarious. <laughs> most my, all my movies were comedic. I love um, that. I love that he's like you. I, okay, but this is funny, so you get a pass. <laughs> yes, it was like it, it's all good. It was all worth it. I yeah, I had a few Metal Gear movies. I had like a Spider Man series. Uh, my brother and I collectively had so many Star Wars figures that. We made so many Star Wars movies. Mm. Uh, a few Dragon Ball Z ones here or there. Um, a friend and I tried recreating the uh, the movie They Live, mm. starring Roddy Piper. Mm. Yeah. And the reason why it was it was easier to make is because I had a bunch of wrestling figures. Nice. So, <laughs> um, yeah i i I did a lot of those. Uh, and yeah, it's I think it's because it was. You know, easier to make. I'm like, well, I got these toys. I don't have to draw this out. You know, I can just shoot it. Yeah, and, that takes uh, me back to this. Uh, I used to have, I had a camcorder that you literally put a V. Did you ever have one of these where you put a VHS, VHS tape in it? And yep. Oh, man, I loved that. I made movies, you know, all the time. I did, mm-hmm. you know, uh, a quote unquote let's play <laughs> of me playing oh. Mario 64. Like, so I just I just literally pointed the camera at the TV, and uh, me and you know my friends and I was just playing it and you know dude just goofing around and 
uh, <laughs> weirdly enough, yeah, that's I was like almost not almost it was straight up a let's play <laughs> like and we, we we watched it again if there was like a funny part or whatever. Um, there was also uh, this. It's funny. This is something that maybe if you'd asked me a year ago, I say I don't do this anymore. But I remember as a kid, I would design like kind of like game shows and board games and a lot of a lot of stuff. Like I I oh god, this is really uh bringing out a lot of memories. Um, I tried to make a Yu-Gi-Oh knockoff, but with Mario. Like so, I what I what I did was <laughs> in MS Paint. I like made a format of Yu-Gi-Oh cards. Um, this was before they had like those you could just make you know customizer Yu-Gi-Oh templates. So I just made my own template. I would take like sprites and stuff. I would write all the rules, given like the attack and defense, and I printed them out. And then like you know you could actually play you know play a game with these like flimsy paper cards. <laughs> um, there was one I did where I was like, I was really into dungeon dice monsters. You know what I'm talking about. Yes. You know what that <laughs> is, Aubrey? Few. Dungeon I dice monsters? I have no monsters? idea what that is. Okay. No. Uh, it, it was a, a spinoff thing in Yu-Gi-Oh! Um, that it, it essentially had a grid, and the dice would unfold. You know how, like, a dice has six sides? So they unfold into these six six square, like, shapes. And, like, you, you, okay. like, you like, put them on the board and whatever, and they, like, I forget the exact rules, but... I basically made my own knockoff of it. I was like, that's so cool. So I would, like, you know, make the shapes, fold them up into dice, and then the dice would open up into the shapes, and I had, like, different... Oh, my God. I So fast-forwarding to now, because I, I would just have doc fi- word docs filled with stats and, you know, all this <laughs> stuff, and uh for all these games that either did or didn't come to fruition some did some didn't and you know running the pokemon rp that i do now uh it's just it's just that the reason why i get so in you know enjoy doing it so much is it's just scratching that itch i had as a kid of just Mm -hmm. making these designing a whole game from scratch like i don't know there's something very satisfying to me I, I miss that purity. I miss that childlike innocence where <laughs> you weren't you weren't afraid of anything. If mm-hmm. you just wanted to make a game like that, if you want to make a movie, you just made it. Yeah. Nowadays, right. I think of like all the technicalities. I'm like, oh, you gotta make a, I gotta make a movie. The the lighting has to be good. Uh, you gotta get the best equipment. I uh, gotta make sure the script is tight. I didn't write a script when I made movies back in the day. We just, <laughs> I'm like, all right, this is the scene I want next. Uh, we gotta make sure this is said, and uh, let's just roll with it. Let's mm-hmm. just, you know, say something. It's I, I miss being unbound. <laughs> yeah, like uh, like creative was, exploration and free to yeah. get as a kid yeah i get that um and you know that's something kind of like with even with youtube like there's this kind of pressure right of like you can't just i do kind of miss it's kind of what vine was fun for but even when vine became popular for me then it was a little more pressure maybe, maybe i'll do tiktok maybe i'll throw my TikTok's- my my oh, dumb yeah. stupid like effortless things on tiktok or something i don't know tiktok's fun you would be great on it uh, I, like, guess. I think it's just for fun like because it's like but I mean, it's hard because it's, you're in such a different place now. So mm-hmm. I, you know, there's always an expectation for you. But it's it's just fun to play an experiment on TikTok. I like do it with videos and it's like not perfect or just anything. But it's like, oh, I'm hiking. I like making pretty like short, very short vignettes of like my hikes or whatever mm. uh, on TikTok. And it's just for fun, you know, whatever. But it's like very freeing. It's like, yeah, it's not perfect, but whatever. Who cares? Something that people always say, you should do it. I'm like, ah, oh, maybe. Man, who knows? Maybe when this is out, I've changed my mind. But I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. It is, it is kind of, there is kind of like a nice tempting, like, you could just, you know, it seems like even if someone doing like a dumb, like, impression of something does, does bonkers on there, and I'm like, probably kind of just like, goofy things that I feel like do it, but don't necessarily warrant an entire YouTube, I don't know, we'll see, but now, Aubrey, do you have a question or topic that you want to bring to the table? I'm curious, since we've ridden this nostalgia train, like, what were your favorite field trips you guys went on? Ooh, that's a great Ooh. question, actually. Uh, <laughs> I have one to start, and uh, so I'll... There was a... Oh, I loved this. It was a outdoor winter camp. Um, oh. oh. I want to see if I can remember the name of it. In Minnesota? In Minnesota, yeah. Um, Damn, that's intense. It was an overnight camp. This was sixth grade. 
Um, I want to, I think it was Wolf Ridge. Wolf Ridge, yeah, the Wolf Ridge Environmental Learning Center. I think that's, I'm pretty sure it was this. And it was just like, you, you, you went there, it was winter, snow everywhere, and you did all sorts of activities. And you, it was maybe like, I want to say like three, four days or something like that, which, you know, Mm-hmm. going overnight with your school friends and it's everyone right and you're like in in mm-hmm. cabins and it was just really special like if you know it's not something like that you really got to have very often that whole experience and there was like snowshoeing and like zip line like a weird like it was like a zip line oh. and uh like you could like uh mountain uh, rock climbing walls and it it was that's awesome it was amazing and just like uh yeah i don't know like i i have very very fond memories of of that trip um yeah how about how about you guys any field trips jump out for you guys i have one when i was older i kind of um and so in college we had this class uh in our senior was a junior i don't know whatever it doesn't matter uh in photography it's just like hey we're going to tour around the area and show you all the different ways you can work as a photographer right like and a lot of it was like photo studios print shops art galleries etc etc but one that i loved was being able to go to nasa goddard uh space center and tour it because apparently they have photo photo positions there um there's like two photographers there one of the one of my alumni worked there currently Mm. Uh, and, uh, and it was amazing to see them. So they, I think, I think they still are. They were working on, uh, what's going to replace the Hubble telescope, which is the web telescope. And you get to see like the clean room that they go in and you're like, see literal astrophysicists at work and, um, you know, walk by machines that simulate a vacuum of space to test the parts. It was just incredible. Ooh. That was really fun. Just like from, uh, like behind the scenes, getting to see, and it was like during work day. So it was just like, you, it's just a day at NASA, you know, whatever, just tour it. Uh, and have these like cool people do uh, that kind of thing. So that was probably as an older person, that was fun. But as a kid at Girl Scouts, um, we got to sleep over at the Discovery Zone. It's like this uh, like little museum uh, in the inner harbor of Baltimore. Mm. And that was really fun. Being able to sleep overnight at a museum was really fun. I tried to sleep in a fake dinosaur print and they're like, get out of there. But still, pretty fun. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So. Uh, how about you, Steve? And- for me, my entire tenure uh, of elementary school was pre nine eleven. So mm. we we definitely got to I, I, fifth grade was the primo uh, field trip year. That's when you got to go to some cool spots. And being in New York, that's when you get to go to uh, you know the Bronx Zoo. Mm. Uh, I think the Museum of Natural History. I think the Liberty Science Center. But oh, I wow. think the. The first one that came to mind, and it's always in the fall, I think it's within the first, I think it's around October when we go, you go to this like stay away camp. I, I think it was called Ashokan. Okay. Ash- uh, maybe it's the Ashokan Center. Yeah. Um, it's, it's basically like, think of like summer camp, but like you just go in the fall and like they take the entire fifth grade class mm. and it, it's... <laughs> it's definitely like a coming of age trip it's like cool you got the <laughs> you know you're you're staying away from home you know with a bunch of like kids your age and you get to do a bunch of outdoorsy stuff like fishing uh you could you could go canoeing mm. uh mm-hmm. i think there there is uh like the the like the crazy uh bridges like the ones you could like jump on you know like the yeah 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 oh yeah yeah Yep. I remember there was also like a recreation of like an old schoolhouse and I and I don't know what came over me. I think I just wanted to perform that day. So I just acted like an idiot and I was made the dunce. <laughs> like I had I had to I had to sit in the corner and face the other way cuz I was just like I was treating like I was a freaking shtick. I don't know what came over me. <laughs> I was just like I I, 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 I was like mystery science theater three thousand it in there. Yeah, and I remember one of the because te- um uh fifth grade classes from other elementary schools went too, and I remember one of the teachers from a different school came up to me and like 
tried to like talk like whisper me it's like it's like can you stop like can you it's like what's the matter can you calm down and i and i i remember turning this teacher saying like what it's a bit it's like, it's like, 10 year old me and i'm like yeah i'm just like i'm i'm playing along with it like it's, oh i think karma hit me good because i think the following morning when we went to like the fishing hole i never got to fish because my uh fishing line got all tangled up on my rod so I was bummed out. And I remember that teacher walking by me as I was like sitting aside somewhere trying to untangle my fishing rod later. And I was and somehow a 10 year old me knew what karma was. And I was like, eh, I guess I deserve this. <laughs> I, love, I just I couldn't that's tell you Steve thing. What? It's a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Which is like half the things I say. Honestly, I think a lot of times when like someone will joke with me and I play along and I was like, all right, calm down, Steve. And I'm like, I'm like, what? I'm just, I, I'm playing along. Am I that good of an actor? Should I, should I pursue this? <laughs> Maybe I'm just so, I, I I think just my presence is just very large and loud. Everyone's like, okay, calm down. Stop yelling. <laughs> He's going to charge. <laughs> oh, the bull. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that, I, I think that's, that was just a really fun trip. Um, mm. And I think a sentimental one was, you know, I mean, you know, my parents were never really uh, the parents that they would bring along to keep in charge of groups of kids. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like uh, chaperone. chaperones, chaperones, chaperones. chaperones. Yeah, chaperones yeah. Yes. And my parents were never really chaperones because, you know, they worked during the day. And my dad, too, was especially busy. But the one time he was like, yeah, yeah, I'll be a chaperone for when you go to the Liberty Science Center. It was so lax. My teacher was like, eh, you, you really don't get it watch over some kids you could just you know hang out with your son so it was just me and my dad getting to like just hang out on a field trip that's and that was really that was a nice sweet yeah, that's fun that's yeah. cool mm -hmm. man i'm i'm like i'm just in this nostalgic mood right now like <laughs> like uh when i was in elementary school i was uh i hesitate to say like class clown but kind of like i did i was actually i very much like try to get people to laugh uh, and get in trouble you know and i would you know, like i'll tell you right now if you were in my situation in that recreation of like the schoolhouse yeah you would probably be killing it like people <laughs> would probably think you were funny <laughs> everyone probably just thought i was annoying <laughs> uh, uh, well i mean i i mean i would just do a lot of uh, silly bits or whatever like you know and it, the best would be like if i could crack someone up and then the teacher like was like stop and they're like but he and I was like well, I didn't I didn't do anything <laughs> um like I remember I forget if I told this story on the podcast or not um you remember when you had to do the pledge of allegiance yeah uh, I don't know if this is a, is this a thing that kids still do in school I have I honestly have no idea uh, I don't talk to children much these days but um <laughs> Uh, That's good. I, I would have I have, have many questions. <laughs> I talk to kids all the time. In fact, exclusively <laughs> children. Con um, cons considering how our generation, especially, refuses to let go of things. You want to talk about nostalgia? Like we're all still into a lot of the things we were into when we were elementary. That is very yeah. true. So, <laughs> yeah. um, but I remember we I was. We could talk to kids. <laughs> yeah, I was. I was doing like we were doing the Pledge of Allegiance, but like to for the girl, a friend of mine standing next to me. Just to make her like break, I would do it in a really thick like Texan accent, like I pledge allegiance <laughs> to the flag, and like, but you know, Unison, no one can hear it except she can hear me doing it. I'm right next to her, and she's like, "Stop!" I'm like, "And to the republic for which it stands," like, just like stupid shit like that. Oh my, like, God, I, I like, um. Elementary school, and you know, for some, I, I, for some kids, they didn't have a great elementary school life. But I loved elementary school. Like, I don't know about you two, but I had to, like that was like fun. I don't know. It was you know, it, middle school onward. Then it became like, oh, uh, you got to do like okay. Oof, that, that that was that was when sad reality hit. Yeah, it's like oh, <laughs> like oh god, there's actual like homework you got to worry about. Uh, but like I don't know, like sixth grade before and uh, kindergarten through sixth grade, I, I honestly had a blast. But I don't know how your guys is. <laughs> I I loved elementary school. Yeah. I because I think it was uh yeah it was it was more creative and stuff. I, I you know there were some rough spots. I remember I I genuinely thought I I had a chance of failing the fourth grade and oh really. 
I, it, I, how was it when you found out that you were graduating to the next class? Because I remember that year, you, your your teacher would call you up one on one to just go over your final grades mm, for the year. Yeah, and I remember being terrified. And I remember when my teacher was just like, "You pass," and I was like, "Yeah." <laughs> the, the, was there like a particular subject you were struggling in, or? I'm I am not good in. <laughs> so you could tell by the way I talk. Uh, math and science, mm. not my thing. Well, then again, elementary school wasn't so bad. But I remember even like in second grade, like I couldn't grasp division right away. I see. Like multiplication mm-hmm. was easy. Yeah. But division, like I, and even like God, the stuff you got to learn from middle school on, like my brain just it never clicked for me. Mm. And and since I think since teachers are all just trying to teach everyone the same exact way. Yeah, I I struggled, but I don't know. I just I, I'm just I'm not the I'm not the brightest bulb. <laughs> um, I disagree. It just certain subjects don't click with people. Yeah, That's I mean, fine. science for me. I think I just remember maybe doing poorly on some tests, and I thought like, I don't know, Steve, this is it. Mm. <laughs> well, it also really affects what teachers you have, right? Like I've had teachers. I was terrible, and still am at spelling. Uh, like execrable like i spelled in first grade breakfast with a q on a spelling test i don't even like and a bunch of other letters it was bad Mm -hmm. um and so for a long time english was like i was like oh my god i'm so bad at english i hate this i hate this and it was supposed to be in like you know not the highest level honors you know english in middle school because they play so badly in it my parents were like uh no you're just gonna work harder sorry (laughs) you're gonna be an honors okay Mm -hmm. but my english teacher in middle school uh middle school was actually like he read over my stuff and was just like hey Actually, like, he read my paper, I forget, an essay to the class, but he didn't say who I was. It just was like a nominous thing. It's just like, and I think this paper is really good and I want to read it to everyone. I was like, oh, Jesus. Oh, God. <laughs> why, did you, why did teachers do that? <laughs> but, and then he, but nobody knew who it was. So it was like not horrible, but I was sitting there like sweating. <laughs> oh, God, please. And then, <laughs> like, oh, no. Uh, but then he pulled me aside after class, after everyone left. And was just like, Aubrey, you're a good writer. And it was the first time anyone had ever told mm. me that. It's like, you know, the grammar and all that stuff is like, we can work on that. That's the easy part of writing. The hard part is getting the different concepts and seeing, like analyzing stuff. And, and you articulate those things well. And it changed. Like, I was like, damn, now I want to try it like more. Like, you know, I wanna, I'm actually yeah, interested it, in getting better in this. So isn't it great when, you know, uh, adults inspire kids to <laughs> right? <laughs> But it just just was like reframing it. It was was like, oh, okay, maybe I'm not terrible. Because before it was like, oh, you're hopeless. You're pretty bad. And it it was bad. It wasn't, I'm not trying to say it was like, it was bad. But there's with grammar and spelling. But um, yeah, you know, I don't know. Was there any teachers or mentors or people like that that inspired you to do something differently? Mm. See something a different way? That's a good question. I mean, yes. I mean, I I think I was pretty lucky that for a lot of my early years, they were, I had very supportive, uh, teachers um i'm trying to think of like ones that are like oh like super stand up because i mean i i I, it sounds like they would i didn't have any but it's more like they were they were all pretty generally supportive you know what i mean so it's like Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but did you either of you have like a like that sort of moment definitely uh for sure i think being like an art kid Mm. i think anytime like teachers saw that they you know definitely like pushed you to do that mm. mm-hmm. it was just still talking about elementary school like how i liked it so much uh having an older brother uh, I'll, i'm sorry it's a little off topic but still talking about school sure. uh having like my brother is older than me so he was already in elementary school when i was uh, no sorry he was in he was in sixth grade when i was in fourth grade and mm-hmm. he had to wake up earlier school started earlier for them so naturally, I just I wanted I'm like, yeah, I guess I'll just start waking up when he does, you know, just so <laughs> I, I don't I don't know if it was like I wanted to be like him or just like, eh, he's doing it. I'll do it. Mm. That's how mm. I wound up discovering Pokemon. <laughs> but um, what I would used to do, it's like I would just be up early and then there's really nothing to do at home. I would and my elementary school was a quick walk from my house. I would just walk to the school early and just hang out and wait for people to show up. You know, like wait, you know, you have to wait outside the school or wait inside in the main lobby, but you wait for other kids that either get dropped off or they walk to show up and then you start like hanging out, maybe you play tag or something. Yeah. And at one point the vice vice principal of my elementary school um wrote a letter to my parents uh asking uh me to stop coming in early. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> um and 
my mom got pissed because they spelled my name wrong. Mm. <laughs> this is like fuck they this guy. Steven. <laughs> it's, it's a, the is it's they spelled Stephen the incorrect way. Uh, my mom was just like, "You've been going to school for like it's like five years, and they don't know how to spell your name." And it's like, it's like screw her. And then my mom said, uh, Stephen, just don't go that early. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, wait, like, why would a parent get mad at you for doing that anyway? It's it's almost like, wow, you should be. It's, yeah, it's better than it's going late, like, hey, right? Be, you know? Yeah. Yeah, right? right? It's like that it showed enthusiasm. I used to do. Sorry, just ties into that. Because my elementary school was so close. And when it got to be like August, when back to school season was starting, sometimes I would just walk over and walk in and visit old teachers and see if they needed help with anything mm. like setting up the classroom mm. uh i don't know w- why i would do that I, I guess i just didn't know what to do with my time um kid. i mean that's but that's a great quality yeah, yeah i guess but i i remember sp- specifically doing that with my third grade teacher who i got along with a lot uh she was always we would she would joke about my Star Wars fandom and how I like Jabba the Hutt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I remember I, I, I would, in my later high school years, I would just walk to and from uh, high school because I didn't feel like taking the yeah. bus. And I would mm-hmm. cut across where my elementary school is all the time. And I think one morning I was walking to school. Uh, my third grade, my old third grade teacher is getting out of uh, her car. She's just parked. And she just like waves me over and to talk to me. And she's just like, I don't know, she's just being so nice and like really like praising me and like asking me if I'm still doing art. And I was just amazed that a teacher remembered me mm, after all those years, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> let alone recognized me. Right. But, you know, I will always remember that. And uh, I don't I don't want I I, I could I, I have like a some other teachers that helped out too, but I want to take up the entire conversation. Um, I remember when I visited Minnesota, this was not that long ago. This might've been maybe, maybe two. Oh God, no. Okay. Because of COVID, I got to think, okay, that, that, that year plus. So maybe this is what I mean, like three years ago, or three, four years ago. Um, we went back to not my hometown, but basically where I grew up as a kid, like for all of elementary school. Um, and we mm-hmm. stopped by the, my old elementary school just to, uh, like visit, I guess. And I ran and my old first grade teacher was still teaching. Uh, and she remembered us like, I mean, very, very wow. vividly, like, uh, cause my mom had been a very active chaperone, uh, in during elementary school. So like, she v- very much remembered my mom, remembered me. It was like. She was like, oh, yeah, you're doing, you know, I told her what I was doing now. And she's like, oh, wow, that's, you know, amazing. And I always knew. And I was like, damn, that's, <laughs> that's very, very, it's very nice of you. Going back to your question, Aubrey, of um, kind of like, I've, I've had a lot of very supportive teachers throughout the years. But one, there was a teacher actually in college, actually, um, at Michigan State. And uh, I'll, I'll shout him out, John Whiting. Uh, he's, he's, he's the best. Um, he, I, I took audio classes with him audio class advanced audio and during that time period i think it was maybe the last two years of college i did a lot of that was like i think the first two years of college before i just knew what i wanted to major in i was pretty reclusive didn't really like i was also you know commuting i didn't like stay live on campus so while i had like friends i wasn't like a social butterfly or anything like that but once i decided my major which was media arts and technology and started taking a lot of those classes and seeing a lot of the same people. That's when I really started to open up and uh, did a lot of like, you know, wrote a lot of uh, like comedic stuff and did a lot of performing. And then also in, in, included the audio classes where we had to do stuff like you got to write a whole radio play and record all the dialogue and all the sound effects yourself. Uh, or you have to you're going to take this scene from Star Trek, but it, there's no sound. You have to do all the voices all the, you know, basically fill all the audio. Um, and I remember um, most kids in my class were like, they wanted to get into like the music industry or, you know, film industry or whatever and so forth. Uh, but I was the only kid who was like, yeah, like I want to do voiceover, which was not super common, I think. Um, and I, you know, I didn't really like bring it up. And, you know, I think he made, I remember him sort of like, asking about it 
like, what, what are you, you know, what do you want to do? And I was like, oh, well, you know, voiceover. And he was like, yeah, no, I absolutely think you can do it. And that meant a lot, you know, because it really, at the time, it, you know, and even for, you know, years after that, it just felt like a pipe dream, right? I was like, yeah, but I mean, I, I God, I, I don't, it's impossible. It'll never, ever happen in a million years, but I really want it really bad. But to have someone actually be like, no, yeah, you, you, you can do it. Uh, you, 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 you have the talent for it. It was very, mm -hmm. it was very, very uh, important to me to hear that at the time. Um, and yeah, how about you, Aubrey? Anyone else besides your, uh, yeah, your, um, oh, my English teacher. Um, hmm. Um, let's see. This is going to sound super cheesy, but my dad was the first person who, <laughs> so I got my first mm. camera uh, back. Um, I, I, since I was a little kid, since I was four, I always wanted to be an artist. I'm like, I want to be an artist. And for me, cause I didn't think about it and I was four. Uh, and I was like, I, that means drawing, but I was like, and I liked drawing, but I could tell it wasn't very mm. good at it. <laughs> and I took drawing and painting, painting in high school and I was getting better, and, you know, all that's jazz, but it, it wasn't clicking with me in the way that it would with other kids that you could see. And I'm like, ah, you know, I don't know. And it's like, how am I going to make money as a painter too? <laughs> like, you know, cause I was really interested in like watercolors and stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, but, uh, uh, then I got my first camera to, at first to just take photos of stuff and then draw it was the intention. But my friend and I, we were bored. We lived in the country. So we like did a little photo shoot in her house and around just like a, anything and everything. And I brought back these like hundred photos or so and showed them to my dad. I was like, Oh, look what I did today, dad. And my dad was like, paid attention, looked at all of them, a hundred mm. of them or hundreds of them. And you would comment and make like, actually give me my first, what I turned out to be like a critique. It's like, Oh, this one's really good. Oh, you know what? If you try this with the lighting, da, da, da. and the fact that he's just like, you know, you should keep doing this. That you, I think you really have a thing for photography. And I think this might be something you might be interested in. I was like, oh, I never knew that. And we would go on drives. Like he would, cause before I could drive, he would take me out on like long, like drives after school. So we could take photos of like further mm -hmm. afield. How old know? were you? Uh, you know, my when backyard this, or whatever. When he, when he did this. Let's see. I got my first camera at 15. I burned it out within a year because there's a thing called a shutter life <laughs> <laughs> and you can use up the shutter life of your camera. And I did it in my first year. It was like a little point and shoot camera back in the day before there's no cell phones or smartphones yeah. or whatever. Um, and so within after that year, I was also working at McDonald's. I managed to save up a little bit of money and then buy a um, buy a DSLR. And actually, before I bought my DSLR, I was like, T talking to my mom after work, I was like, man, I'm so tired of working at McDonald's. I really want to be a photographer. She was like, well, have you emailed any photog local photographers asking them if they need an assistant or an intern? I was like, no, I didn't think about that, but I'll do that. And so I, I, she's like, okay, first you want to research them and their websites, see which ones you like. And you know, also, so both my mom and my dad really helped me on my path. Did, uh, do um, either of them have a background in photography today. at all? Uh, my dad was always like the family documentarian, mm. like, and he was, he would do a bunch of extensive like videos and stuff. And he still shoots, you know, still, uh, takes photos and stuff, but he wasn't like a professional photographer by any means or anything. Like he, he, he loves it. He probably could be if he worked at it, but he was a stay at home dad. And my mom was the one mm. that worked and he, um, did, so they did that. Um, so he was busy raising us basically. But that's awesome though that like, even, <laughs> even without a background, he was like so supportive and like, like, Hey, yeah, you should mm -hmm. do this. Like. Which you didn't even realize at the time, right? Yeah, yeah. He had a... So my mom had an English major. My dad was a philosopher. So they were like, you should do whatever you want. <laughs> <laughs> like, don't worry. Like, you'll, you'll figure it out. We're like, okay. <laughs> uh, but yeah, he was super... They were both super supportive. My mom was like, yeah, write to all those like local wedding photographers. And she taught me some of the business skills that I needed to get like a foot in the door so I could start wedding photography back in like high school and stuff. It worked out. Um, oh, so, wow. Oh, cool. I wish more people... <laughs> did that for young people yeah. I, I mean it's mm -hmm. i mean it's different now with the internet but geez yep. even in college it's like when i was in college i don't think people were quite telling you like teaching you the business side of things mm -hmm. yeah yeah it's it's tough the, the actual business and i by no means was perfect by it like oh like whether it was in college or knew everything like no i still working my both other jobs i've learned a lot of other stuff about business yeah. photography should always but, be learning never stop learning. yeah yeah oh yeah yeah but it was super helpful to have that experience beforehand because i also wanted to make sure like i don't know if i want to pursue this afterwards um and it was a little risky for me to work at the wedding business because it was like hey you just spend your entire savings on a laptop photoshop and uh a DSLR. I was like, okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> let's do it. <laughs> so, but it worked out. So it was okay. Uh, I mean, while I could, I think we could keep talking for hours and hours. I think this is a good, kind of a good, good ending point. I think talking about people that inspired us, people, you know, I 
feels good. Feels good, man. Uh, I mm-hmm. I yeah. um always you know you know it, it it was it was very fun going through these childhood memories with both of you. <laughs> now uh, before we sign off, where can people find you guys? We'll start with you, Steve. You could find me at my website, steveyurko.com, on social media like Twitter, Twitch, Instagram, at Steve Yurko. And check out some of the shows I storyboarded on, the latest being season five of Rick and Morty. And Aubrey. Yeah, if you Google my name, Aubrey Garwood, you'll find my website, Twitter, Instagram, um, TikTok, whatever. Fantastic. Thank you guys for being on. And uh, yeah, it's always a pleasure. Always. Thank you. Peace. Bye. Hehehehe. <laughs>